in whatever you guys feel comfortable with, with your camera on or off, I'm fine with. And <clears throat> go to share my screen. I'm gonna share Google Chrome, share computer audio sound, and optimize it for video clip. Share. And I will go to is this it? Yep. <clears throat> They're all starting to look the same to me. <laughs> Love the consistency, but now I'm like, oh my gosh, which one is this? Okay, so here we are. We are jumping into Google Sites. I know that we've had trainings in Google Sites over the years, but it might have a different meaning to you now. You might be having students work on them. You might be finally using it or wanting to read yours or just wanting some hits. And like I said, you can either follow along or you can just listen to me in the background like I'm your radio station. This is being recorded and it will be put up on the interweb later tonight. So I'm going to be talking about with Google Sites, that first word says WYSIWYG, which in computer speak means what you see is what you get. And with Google Sites, that's pretty much the case. Um, so we'll be talking about that type of formatting. It's a little bit different than some other website builders. We're going to talk about the limitations of Google Sites because once I find that people start using it, they want to do more and it doesn't do much more. <laughs> it's supposed to be simple, down and dirty, get to the point. And so we don't get too hung up on um, fonts and colors and some of the design elements. So we'll talk about that. And then we'll talk about the difference between a stagnant and a dynamic page. Um, stagnant is not a good word for me to use. It sounds awful, but it pretty much means that it doesn't change or move. It just sits there. And I believe if I was good, I did put in a, um, I did put in a video. So um, I put this one in because it shows you how to create a personalized GIF. A GIF is an image that moves instead of just saying an image. Some people say GIFs. There's much debate. We could talk about that all day long about whether or not it's GIFs or GIFs, but I go by the peanut butter and the peanut butter has a J and it's called GIF. So that means it would be a GIF. And it's a graphic image type thing and graphic starts with G and says G. So GIFs, you heard it here and of course I'm right. So we're gonna hear about how you can make them into um, little movable things. All right, up next today is how to put these very cool GIFs of yourself onto your Google site, which is awesome for those of us starting with remote learning in the fall, especially if you have new students who may not know your face and you want them to know your face. So here is how to get started on putting a GIF of yourself onto your Google site or anywhere if you'd like. All right, so first thing you need is you need some type of video recording software, not software, but video recording device. You can use your phone. Uh, you can use, uh, for me, I'm going to use the um, software that is on my Mac, which is called QuickTime Player. Once you open it, you are going to click New Movie Recording. Now, this um, is an option for those of us who have QuickTime Player on Mac, but if you don't, just choose any movie recording software that you have. Most computers have it on there. You just have to find out what it is. You can also just use it recording your iPhone and record a quick video of you could use Screencastify too. It's anything that puts your video on your screen in front of you, basically. Oh, where did it go? <laughs> Susie, where is Screencastify? It's one of the extensions that's in our um, Google suite. So in that, I just taught that class at 11, so that video will be up later too, if you, st okay. if you still have questions. All right, let me zoom this one back up. Sorry about that. All right, up next. Uh, you can use, uh, for me, I'm going to use the um, software that is on my Mac, which is called QuickTime Player. Once you open it, you are going to click New Movie Recording. Now, this um, is an option for those of us who have QuickTime Player on Mac, but if you don't, just choose any movie recording software that you have. Most computers have it on there. You just have to find out what it is. You can also just use it recording your iPhone and record a quick video of yourself. All right, so when you are ready, I'm gonna take my headphones out to make it extra special. Um, don't make it too long, only a few seconds. <laughs> now, 
It's kind of silly. All right, so what you want to name it, um, call it diff me site one, and it's going to go to my desktop. I'm going to save it. Now what I've learned is you don't want to move too fast because your GIF can be kind of fuzzy, but you're going to save that and put it somewhere on your desktop. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to a website called unscreen.com. That's another GIF that I made. So when you go to unscreen.com, you're going to upload a clip that you just created. And you just have to look on your desktop to find this movie that you created. And you can see that mine is the first thing that I've made. Okay, and it's preparing that upload, which is awesome. And it's preparing that upload, which is kind of funny. As you can see, it's getting kind of weird on my fingers. So the slower you move or the less you make your GIF do, the better. I'm gonna go with this for right now because that's as good as it's gonna go. Now I'm gonna download this and I'm going to download it as a GIF. I've never downloaded other options, though I'm sure they serve a purpose. And it is compositing. Now there's all these cool options here, color, image, transparent, but this is a free website and a lot of the other options do cost, um, have a cost that comes with them. So it downloads pretty fast. It's going to save down here onto my save bar, but it's also in my downloads folder on my computer. Now here I'm gonna go to my Google site. I'm gonna go to the page that I want. I've created these cool buttons for my Google site and now my GIF that I have created. All right, it's here, I'm gonna drag it over and I am just going to drag it in to my Google site. Now, there it is and there I am, jiffing away, raising the roof. All right, so once you publish or once you view, I would probably redo this if this one is gonna be my official one because I don't like my fingers being kind of weird. Um, now, I don't think I've published this, so it's not going to show up. Go ahead and let me publish my site, which is what you have to do in order for everything to show up. And once I've published, I'll be able to see my GIF, um, which is right there. Okay, so let's preview what it will look like. And there I am, right next to my schedule for the day. So this is just a great way to have fun on your Google Sites, set them up for your students, and set them up for a little excitement and success uh, every single day. If you want to check out how to make these cool buttons, or if you want to purchase and make the copy of this Google Site, please just check out my channel and check the links below. You don't need to purchase anything because you can make your own. And I already made a video that shows you how to make buttons. So you don't need to do that either. <laughs> um, I like to share that because I do you talk slower than she does. <laughs> do I talk slower than she does? That's all. <laughs> she does talk fast, but that's the benefit of YouTube. You can rewind if you didn't get it. Um, I liked it because it was something I didn't know how to do. So I'm learning alongside all of you and I thought that it was adorable. Not necessary, so if you're not there yet, don't fret. All right, so now we're gonna head off to Google Sites. Let me hit escape. And I'm gonna open up a new one. So I'm going to go to sites.google.com. I don't think I could do sites.new. Let's try sites.new. It works for docs, it works for sheets. Does it work for sites? Looks like it does. <gasps> Look at that. See? So I just created a new site. So let's talk first about the limitations to Google. They I'm don't. Hmm? First thing this morning. Oh, no, I don't think so. I think she's. I'm going to hit mute. Hang knows we're overdosed. <laughs> oh, at least I think I'm going to. participants and there we go all right patty if you need me you can unmute all okay. right so when you're in google sites they don't give you a ton of choices on how to make it look pretty which is good and bad it's good because it's it it hastens the pace and it doesn't get you bogged down in finding just the right font or just the right color but it also means that if you want just the right font or just the right color, you either have to find a workaround or you just have to deal with it. So when you're in themes over here, 
on the right hand side is where you spend a lot of time when you're in Google Sites and under themes they have only like six of them and five of them and then each one of those only has a few different colorways. You can pick a custom colorway but it's still not going to make much of a difference. So even just looking at simple, right now it's on simple with this teal. This is what simple with pink looks like. Simple with green, not much difference. Simple with purple, simple with black, simple with any color I want. I could pick yellow. So it's not much change. I also can change the font style so that it's light, classic, or heavy. Each theme only comes with three font styles and they're not all the same. So like Aristotle will have different font styles. They have modern, classic, and bold, and Vision has bold, modern, and classic. So they're not all the same on all the themes. So it's a matter of just finding something that you like and going with it. It's not, a, there's not a lot of choices, so don't agonize over it. So once you've picked what you want, I generally go with um, some type of blue, like a Mashby blue for the ones I've been building. So that's good enough. I'm in there now and you can see what it did is it changed my title bar up at the top to the Mashby blue color. So the first thing that I always go into when I start a brand new site is I go into settings and I check out all of these just to make sure there's nothing that I've forgotten. So you can decide where you want your links to go. Do you want your links to go across the top or down the side? Your choice, nothing is wrong with that. Your color, um, transparent white or black? That's a good question. It's on transparent. I've never touched that before. Someone will have to touch that button later because I'm not gonna do it right now. I'm not sure what it does. Um, not that I'm afraid to push buttons. Don't be afraid to push buttons. I just don't wanna get lost in my um, train of thought and then have to reel myself back in. Um, search settings, you can decide that when they click on the little search um, tool, the little magnifying glass, that when they do that, is it going to search just your site or is it going to be hidden altogether? Or is it gonna be searching some type of content that's in the, I believe when they say the organization, they mean Mashpee. I usually just leave it on this site or I shut it off altogether. If your site's not that big, it doesn't really need a search thing on it. It's entirely up to you. Brand images. I like to do these. You'll see on the sites that I've built that it has them. So the logo, if I do upload and I have a Mashpee logo in here, I believe, Mashpee logo, there it is. When I click that, it uploads it. And then you'll see it goes up here in the left-hand corner. Do you see where it went up here? It'll go right next to where I'll put my site name in. Alt text is what we do for those who have trouble with vision. So I can write in here, Mashby logo, blue, uppercase M with falcons printed in the middle. So all that is is just an ability. So if somebody with limited sight comes across that image on my site, they can kind of read what the image is. Not it's not totally required. It's, it's a very good thing to do. You don't have to do it right off the bat. You can go back and do it after you have your site up and running, or you can do it as you go along. Do you want the logo color to be your theme? Well, that's the Mashpee blue that's on the logo. So sure, I'm going to click it and it's going to change my blue stripe up here to the Mashpee blue. So now I didn't have to make sure I had the right one. And then a favicon or a favicon. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. When you are in a website, some websites, like if you're looking at my screen, McGraw-Hill has the big M, Lexia has the bars, Typing Club has the little typey guy, um, different uh, Renaissance has the R. Those are favicons or favicons, however you say it. So you're able to add those and they'll go next to your name like up in the address bar. So you could use the same one. I could use the Mashpee logo. I could use anything really. I'll do that and that puts it in, it'll be tiny. And then viewer tools, um, do you wanna show the last time the page was updated? Do you wanna show the contact form like the contact me thing? And then anchor links, when you hover your mouse over something, you want them to be able to see it. So I leave that on also. 
Analytics, I have not set up my Google Analytics tracking, so I don't usually put this in, but that's something if you're into that, you can go through the Google Analytics thing and they'll give you a tracking ID. You pop it in here and then they'll give you analytics about your site. And then the announcement banner. So my favorite thing to write here is under construction because they're all in under construction right now. You can create a button that goes with it or a link if you want it to go somewhere else or have it open in a new tab. You can decide if you want it on all of your pages or just your home page. So I'm going to put it just on my home page and that's it. So now if I close this, you'll see up here at the top it says under construction and so that's only on my home page. I can always go back and remove it by going back to the settings. I believe I also could have changed the color of that bar. I've changed it to blue before. So that's stuff that I do before I get started. I put my site name in. So this one is going to be, oh, we're gonna create a website on, I don't know. I'm, sometimes my brain is empty. Masking, being able to wear a mask. Okay, so because this is going to be thrown away when I'm done. We're not using this site. And then this part here, you can decide if you want to try typing your title in your mask headquarters. Headquarters. I'm going to do HQ. I don't like using it because obviously I was already starting to have problems with it going down to the next line. It's not always the color I want. It's not always the font I want. That's why you notice on a lot of my sites, let me bring up, um, let me bring this one up. Uh, where is it? Sites.google.com and then pull up this one. And then go to one of the pages. So we'll go to Poshnet, sorry. I believe, no, nope, I use the regular type on this. After all that, I didn't even pull up a good example. I get frustrated sometimes with the titles that come with it. And that's when I create the ones that are custom. And I know which one I did. It was the Falcon Eye. The Falcon Eye, sites.google.com, this one. So I've been working with Deb on their Falcon Eye site. And so we created one up here that takes away the image of the original Google site and instead it puts in one that is made custom. So you can pick your own font, you can pick your own colors, you can have it look the way you want and then you just put the image up there. So if I'm back on the site that we're building, let me close the landing page, close the landing page. Now we're back to masking. So if we're here, what I would do is I would literally you could erase it, but it will still show the box and the edit here. So you can go to the trash barrel and get rid of that. And then you can change your image. And that's when you can upload something that you've already made if you want to, and that will replace the whole thing. So it's just a matter of preference. Again, creating your own and making it custom is more work, more time, more effort, and probably more brain cells than we have left. So don't feel like it's something you have to do, but it's an option. So I go ahead and I'm going to do control Z just to get rid of my, that was my undo button. And then let's see, so I have it all named. I have my little favicon. I have my little logo. I have my title ready to go. And then generally what I'll do next is I'll figure out what pages I'd like to have in this site. So over here on the right hand side, I go to pages. And this is where I can make new ones, except for all of you are in my way. Let's make this small. There we go. So to make a new page, you come down to the bottom and you can click on new page and it will ask what the name of it is. So let's say we were going to create a page for um, routines, like how to take your mask off, where to put it down, all of that stuff. I could hit done and it's going to plop it right in there and it's at the same level as our home page so it becomes an extra page in our document. Let's say under routines I would have you know two different routines. I could do two different pages under it. I could do maybe for indoors done 
and now it's not under routines, it's even with it. I wanna put it as a sub page of routines. So I bring it up and I literally float it right on the word routines and it drops it in as a sub page. And then I could add another sub page, outdoors. I'm just making stuff up, people. It knew that it was already a sub page, so it was happy to make me another sub page. So now you can see up here, this is translating to your home page, which we're on right now. And then you have your routine. So when you float your mouse on it, it says indoors and outdoors. So now I have three pages. I can click on routines and this is the intro to all routines. And then I could go up here and go to just indoors or go up here and go to just outdoors. So now let's say this is the basic structure that I want for my web page. I can now go back here and start designing my page. So I'm gonna go into insert. There's lots of stuff that you can do to put into your Google site. There are some layouts. I use them a lot because they make things a lot neater and easier to organize. You can also put things in just on their own single elements. I'll show you in a second. Or you can put in, I'm having a panic moment. Did I hit, I did hit, um, I do this every time now. I did hit record. Um, or you have all of these options here at the bottom as well, which is quite a few. This has grown over the years. So what I would generally do is I would pick something like these to start with. So let's drag this one in and it gives me a place to put a picture so I can go ahead and I can upload a picture from my device. I can select an image that will come from either my drive or if I have the URL of the picture or if I wanna do a Google image search or I could go into my Google photos if I have them in there. So those were some of me, nice. So Google image search, let's say I'm looking for a mask. I've tried this before, you get a lot of Halloween ones. Well, less than last time, but let's go with this one. A little creepy, but I'm gonna do insert it will automatically put it into that box so that I don't really even have to fuss with it. The box itself was a rectangle, so picking a rectangle picture made sense. If it was a square box, I would have tried to pick a square picture just because a square picture doesn't do as well in a rectangle box. And now I can click to edit my text and put whatever I want ever here. And down here, I can do a paragraph. I can go back and change the type of text it is and change it from normal to like heading, it will make it bigger. The colors that it's changing it to is based on the themes that you already picked. So you can't change these colors. All you can do is play with whether or not it's a title, a heading, a subheading, whatever it is that you want. Um, there's not a lot of changing that you can do in these cases. So just be aware of that. Let me go back here. So that part is done. If I wanted to be able to switch the two of them, I can click and drag my picture off to the side and it will switch it. Um, you'll see as you start to drag your picture around, it gives you like a blue bar of some options as to places where you can put your picture. And if you don't like it, just do un, um, the control Z or undo. I'll put it back to where it was. So you can fool around with that. You have your section background. So if you'd like to have it as some type of, you know, like colored background, you can. I believe that there's a couple of different options. You can also choose an actual image as the background. So let's say you had like a special pattern or um, a special image that you wanted to be the background of just that section, you could do that. So that's an option as well. Or you could just leave it as regular. Going back to my insert, one of my favorites is my buttons. This one here, I'm going to drag that one in next. And I use these for a lot of the sites. You saw it on the learning site that we had in the spring. You'll see it on the landing page site that um, we're putting together. It's the, the same frame. So literally I go into the plus and then I either upload the button because I've already saved it somewhere. I don't even know if I have any buttons in here. I get rid of them after a while. No, I don't think I have any buttons. Or I can go and go back to the image search and go to the web 
and be able to search for something or if I have it in Drive, so on and so forth. All of that's possible. And then down here is where you add your text that will describe your button. If you want to take that text box all together and all you want is just the button itself with no text under it, you can use your little um, delete button and we'll take the text right off the bottom. Control Z will bring it back in again. So I love using these. It helps me to stay organized. Sometimes I'll use the bigger ones which allow for like a title and some descriptors. Then you only get three per row. Um, you can move them around, but I've learned the hard way because that's how I learn a lot. Let's say I've created all these buttons and let's say they're all the teachers that you work with and that you didn't put them in alphabetical order as they came into you by the dozens. So you have them all in the wrong spots. You can move them around, but you have to have one empty one, kind of like one of those slide puzzles. So I'm going to take this one out. Oops, control Z. I want to make sure it has the whole thing selected, not just, there we go. Now the dots are all the way around. I can hit delete. Now I can start to slide things around and rearrange where they're going, which I can't do if they're all full. So sometimes I will do an extra row just like this, take one out, move these around, and then delete this one all together because now I was able to put those in the right order, alphabetical, number order, preferential order, whatever it is that you want to do. You can also add by right-clicking in, not right-clicking, double-clicking, double-clicking. You can add from this wheel as well. Sometimes you'll see people that do tutorials on the internet will have this wheel. So like, let's say I wanted to add an image. This is the little symbol for image. I could do that. And again, it brings me to all of my options where I could do an image search or what have you and put an image in. I'm going to ignore my phone. <laughs> and then let's see if you wanted to be able to, I'm going to double click again, upload something from Drive or embed a link, or you wanted to upload something from your device or you wanted to put in a text box, you can do it all from that circle. But everything else is all over here as well. I like using the dividers. I'll pop those in between sections in my website. I think that it helps to do things. You could put in a um, YouTube video, a link to a calendar, the live calendar could go in there. So if I put that in there, I could choose the calendar that I want displayed so that it's seeable, which is nice. I'm gonna close that. Um, there's just, there's a lot of stuff that you can put in. You can create buttons within Google Slides. So let's say the name of this is Mask Store, and we're gonna put the link as um, www.google.com because I have no idea what's gonna be whatever. But I could also look here, and if I found the link I wanted to, I could select it. And then I do insert, it will create a button right here that will allow me to go ahead and click on this and it will bring me right to, to that link when the page is live. So that's one way to make buttons, which is kind of nice. You can also insert a map. You put in the location and then what it will do is bring you to that location and then you can select it and it will put it right into your document showing that area that you just searched for. Um, an image carousel is literally just that. You insert the, pivot, the images that you want. You need to have at least two. So if I do upload image, and let me do these three, four. When I open it, it's gonna put all my little avatars in there. doing all kinds of cute things. And then I hit insert. So now when you go and you preview, I don't know if I can preview it yet without being published, I can. I can come down here and you can now go through those images. So it's an image carousel. So you can put as many in there as you want. So it's a great way to be able to share your document, your photographs rather. 
Um, table of contents, that came in really handy on one of the sites that we used. I can't remember which one it was, but um, if you are creating a new, let me go into the routines page because I know it's empty. And let's say I want to do a table of contents. You add headings and then they'll appear in your table of contents. So let's say my next section, I'm going to do a double click. I'm going to add text and it's not normal text. I need to use heading because that's what it just said. And this is going to be topic one about masks. Oops. And then maybe under this, I have some pictures and maybe I have some more stuff. And then the next section, double click, text box, change it to heading, heading. This is the next interesting idea. And then I could put more stuff under there. So now if I go all the way back to the top, you'll see that it's starting to make my table of contents. So if you have a long page, as long as you use the heading, you'll be able to have it automatically create a um, outline for you to be able to click on. So if I click on next interesting idea, it will bounce me down. Well, if I'm live, it would bounce me down to this section here, which is cool. You can also change the words in your title. It will automatically change it in your table of contents. I don't know what a placeholder is. Let's see, shall we? Placeholder. I think it's just something that you can save for later. Yeah, you can always add a picture in there or what have you. Maybe it's something you need to take a picture that you don't have right now, just to save room in your design to be able to do later. And cloud search, I saw this earlier. So search organizational content. I'm gonna play with that one before I figure that out because I don't know what it's gonna search and we'll, I wanna learn more about that one. It has not been on my radar at all. And then you have all the stuff that you can insert that you have in Google. Are there any questions? I'm going to stop for a minute. I've talked for a long time. No, it's so quiet in here. Um, let me see, then when you're ready, there's a few things you can do. You can preview it here. When you click this button, it shows you what it's going to look like on a computer screen, which is now, what it's going to look like on a tablet, like an iPad or something smaller, and then what it will look like on a phone. So this is what it would look like on a cell phone. So it gives you an idea of what your design looks like when you start playing with it. And then reporting a problem, I think, is more about the app itself. So let me hit the X to get out of my preview mode. And then when you come up here, if you want to collaborate with others, it's just like a regular Google Doc. You can share with them and they can come in and work on it with you. And then you also have your settings here, which we already did. <laughs> and you can duplicate your site if it's something that you're creating for one class and you want something similar for others. Um, there's a tour version history kind of shows you the history of the editing of the site if you need to go back to a previous version. But I was coming up here to hit the publish button. On the publish button, there we go. It's basically going to suggest a URL address for you based on the name of your site. So everybody already starts with the https colon slash slash sites.google.com slash MPS slash whatever it is that you type here. If it's already taken up by something else, it will tell you. But because it's only internal to Mashby, chances are that um, it's probably available. I could change it to masks are us. It doesn't do any capitals, whatever it is that you want it to be. And then down here, you want to decide who's going to be able to view your site. Right now, the default is that the only people who can see your site are the people at Mashpee Public Schools, which for most of our purposes, you probably want it to, my lights just shut off. Um, you probably want it to be public facing unless it has a different purpose or unless it's a student one. There are reasons that you'd want only Mashpee to be able to see it, but you can decide that. Um, where is it coming up? This is where I can add people. This is down here, change. And so my published site, I would be changing it from Mashpee Public Schools to public. 
and then they can find it and open it and see it. And then I can click done. So now I'm going to be live on the web, Masks R Us, you heard it here first. I can click request that public search engines don't display my site. That's probably a good thing today. But I will tell you, I could build this site and nobody would ever find me anyway. The, the impunet is so vast unless they really did a search for um, MASHP and, you know, masks. It might come up then. So I hit publish. So now it's going to the web. Anytime that I make a change to my page, so let's say I revise this paragraph and it's now a new paragraph. I have to go back up to publish and it shows what your draft is that you just did and what's already published. And so before it said paragraph, I mean, no, now it says revise before it said paragraph. So I could go ahead and hit publish. So that's a button that I'm pushing quite often when I'm making all these updates on these sites, just so it's always the current one that's out there. Another thing to be careful of is when you are inserting, let's do um, something from Drive. And let me insert if I go back to my Drive. I want to go to Recent. Sometimes I have trouble with this. Maybe it's this one. Last modified, it's finally going to go at some point. I get stuck here all the time. I don't want to do shared drives. My drive shared with me, my drive. Oop. That's the list. That's the name. I don't want folders. I want, I want the actual files. But anyways, <laughs> that's modified. If I go into my screen, there we go. This is one that I used before. So this is to create a YouTube channel. It's a document. If I have not set my permissions to anyone with the link can view or anyone within Mashby can view, if you go to my site and those permissions are not set, then you will not see my document. It looks beautiful to me, but to you on the other end, it might not look beautiful. So what I will often do when I want to really make sure that it's working is I will grab the link of the published site by clicking this link in the top corner. I will copy it and then I will open it in a different browser. Like I'll open it in Firefox or I'll open it on a different device where I am not logged into my MashP account. I'll email it to myself and then open it somewhere else just to test it out to make sure that all of the links are working and that you can see everything and the sharing settings are right it's a lot easier to be able to do that than to put it out live on the internet and then have people send you emails saying, hey, can't see that. So that's just a great way to be able to, to test it out. I'm stopping again for questions. Nothing in chat so far. All right, we're a quiet group today. Third class, third quiet class. Either, I don't know, it's hard to judge. I guess that's that's just what happens sometimes. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Is there anything that I haven't shared that you were like, hey, why didn't she tell us this? I know I put I put a link in here that has some advanced settings in, in um, using Google Sites that actually is only four minutes long. I, I love the ones that go really fast because I can always rewind it and watch it again. And then I'm not wasting four minutes of my life when they take the first three minutes to say it to say hello and oh, it drives me crazy. So I love the fast videos, but I know they are not for everyone. Anything else? This is where that little search thing came up. So there it is. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything. I can always unpublish my site if I'm like, oh my goodness, I've like totally messed up and I've, you know, put things in the wrong place or I wasn't, I didn't want them to see it until after the test or the holiday or the pro whatever. Um, you can unpublish it and then it will go dark until you come back in and you publish it again. So that's, that's another option that's a good one to have. You have your undo and redo buttons up here. I think I got all the stuff on the side, layouts, pages we did, themes we did, 
those are the basics. And that's what I like about sites is that it's not a really heavy lift when it comes to creating a website. You just have to have an idea of what it is that you want. Um, and when you're looking for things to put in your site, you might want to be looking for images like, um, let's say I was going to put an image in here, select image, and I wanted to find something that had no background on it. So I'm going to do mask and I'm going to add the word vector on it. So anything that comes up is going to look more for the most part like a, um, oh, that's awesome. Let's talk about this actually. It's not giving me a result because it's searching for free to use images, the search tool is pretty limited. So it might not bring back everything that I need, which is kind of sad. I was really just hoping to find clip art. I could do clip art and see if it brings that up. No, nope, no luck today. So mask is not a good one. Let's do a puppy. There's lots of them. What? Is it searching on Google? <laughs> no, by URL? No, Google image search. Puppy, clip art. Okay, Woo! now if I change that to mask, hang on. There's lots of puppies. Mask, clip art. All right, I was on the wrong one. So that's much better. Still not what you want. Some of these would creep kids out. Could you imagine? Oh my goodness. Um, but sometimes you're still not gonna find what you want. So that's when you might have to go to other websites to find usable things like for instance, being able to go to Unsplash is a site that I love to use. That's not so much for clip art, but for photographs and they're all free to use. I wouldn't set students free on Unsplash unless they're older. It's not for the littles. I'll have to come up with a list of places. I usually will just do a Google search for um, royalty free clip art. To see what comes up. Never Google in front of children, but that's public domain vectors. Vectors are the ones that have no background on it. So with these, you might see some better options. These are probably showing up already in that Google image search, but at least you have more options and then you can always download them and then put them up in your site or you can make your own. I did make a video that shows you how to make your own buttons and stuff like that, which is also helpful. If I go back here, I was doing masking. Um, you have to be careful with the square button thing, insert. So that one going into a square button isn't going to work so great because it was wide. I could squish it up from the bottom, but then my um, OCD kicks in because I can't have the text down here and then text up here. So that's why when I've put in these square holes, I want to make sure I'm finding images that can fit in there. So if I want to try again, I would go up to the little snowman, I would do replace image, and then I would do select image. And then I would go back to Google image search, and I would type in mask vector. And then I would make sure that I'm choosing one that's basically a square, so that when it goes in, it pretty much fits in there. That one still isn't great. But at least you have the idea of what you're looking for. I'm going to stop again because it's three minutes of 10 of. <laughs> and I want to make sure that if you have questions, I can gather them. Let me hit stop share. All right. Okay, so in the last two classes, I've said that if there's anybody that has anything that they would like to share during these 10 minutes, whether it's a tool or an idea or a strategy or anything, please feel free to reach out to me because I don't have anyone scheduled for this 10 minutes. <laughs> I had two this morning, but I've run out already. So if you have any anything, I might be bugging you personally just to sign up, but I sent that out in the email this morning. You can go in and sign up for a time slot and then I can either talk it through for you or you can talk it through or you can create a video and I can put it up. However you wanna do it is fine with me. I'm not trying to make extra work, which is pretty much why I didn't ask very many people to help with these courses because I didn't want that added burden that I know comes with trying to prepare a class, especially for your peers. 
but being able to do just a 10 minute commercial, I think that it, at this week it's more doable. Okay. So it's just about 1.50. I'm gonna stop recording unless there's an amazing question that we haven't asked yet. I know there's a few meetings this afternoon. Stop recording.